Oh guys, let's take a look at some buy low, sell high opportunities now. Looking at the player's performance over the last couple of weeks, which does influence rankings on fantasy sites. So you can see guys who are perhaps a little bit overvalued or undervalued, the reasons for those and if you should be looking at those players in trade value. This is uh, These ranks that I'm going to be giving you are per game basis numbers. For the guys who are currently underperforming, where I think they will end up for the rest of the season, we will start with Kawhi Leonard of the Toronto Raptors, who over the last two weeks is the 30th ranked player averaging 23 points almost 10 boards and three assists and mainly because his field goal percentage is down shooting under 43 percent in those five games and hitting just 0.6 triples this is a guy that you can normally expect to hit his threes at a much higher rate 17 percent conversion on his deep balls in the last five games which is dropping his points total his threes down and his field goal percentage he's also not blocking many shots in that time 0.2 yeah, the, the games set out are annoying, and Kawhi is probably going to be sitting out one of this upcoming back-to-back -back as well. But the back-to-backs are going to ease off for the Raptors coming up soon, and I don't think this is going to be an all-of-the-season type scenario for Leonard. And if they're the only games he misses, which again, who knows, um, I think that's a, that's a pretty good deal. So if you can get him for any sort of value in that top 30, I think he's going to push into a top 10 per game value player for the season as that field goal percentage jumps back up. Another guy who's way down the list here is Damian Lillard of the uh, Portland Trailblazers, the 43rd ranked player over the last two weeks, averaging 24, 6, and 7. The steals are really low, 0.3 steals, not a high steals guy anyway, but that's extremely low. But it's the field goal percentage again, 21 attempts and 38%, including just 32% from three, which is dropping his scoring, his field goal percentage, and his three-pointers made as well, causing him to fall all the way down to outside the top 40 over the last couple of weeks. He had those couple of brutal games, uh, when that one in particular against the Lakers, when the shots just wouldn't fall when he was dealing with that knee issue. Probably going to be a hard ask to try and acquire Damian Lillard, but people do some really panicky things in fantasy basketball, and Lillard is a top 10 sort of a player. So any type of second round player, or even you know, third, if you even have to throw two third round players or a third and a fifth round player to get Lillard, if someone wants to accept that because I can't deal with his field goal percentage, which is the, the reasoning that people do give quite often in making their ridiculous trades, you should be exploring that while the shooting is off for Lillard because he will come back and he will be that top Top 10 guy. I'm pretty confident about that. The 62nd ranked player over the last two weeks is Victor Oladipo of the Indiana Pacers, currently out with that knee problem. He's only played under 30 minutes per game over the last five. I guess, granted, that's because he had that five-minute game in there, but a lot of his numbers are down on last season. His field goal percentage and free throw percentage, especially 37 and 74% over those last five games, and something that we warned about quite a bit. The steal rate is nowhere near as high as it was. Only 1.6 steals and 0.8 blocks. The six assists are still nice. Some people are still holding out hope that they're going to get uh, top 10 type production from Oladipo. I don't think you should be looking at it that aggressively, but I think you should be looking at him increasing his field goal percentage, his steal rate to a degree, his free throw percentage as well, which jumps him back up to being a top 30 sort of a guy rather than the, uh, the guy who's currently lingering outside the top 60. One spot behind him in the rankings is Rudy Gobert of the Utah Jazz, the 63rd ranked player over the last two weeks. If you are acquiring Gobert, you have to be aware that the free throw percentage is atrocious, 59% over his last seven games on a significant amount of attempts, a Z score of negative 2.6 in that category, which puts it into you know, pretty aggressive, or well, not quite aggressive, but pretty significant punt territory. But part of the reason, now that's part of the reason why his numbers are down, but also <clears throat> only 1.6 blocks Gobert is averaging over the last seven games. He's averaging 14 points and 12 boards with a steal and 68% from the field. So that's all really nice, but those blocks are down. If they go back to 2.5, then you see him jump 20, 30 spots and you push back into being a top 20, top 25 sort of a player in punt free throw percentage builds. But at the moment, the free throws are hurting him and those lack of blocks, which are such an anchor for Gobert's fantasy value. They aren't, uh, they aren't coming at this, uh, at this very stage. Number 73 is DeAndre Ayton, who I think is a little bit of a buy low at the moment, averaging 16 and a half and 10. It's the 0.3 blocks that's really bringing him down. Uh, he is not a good shot blocker. He is not a good defensive player. I think we're all aware of that at this stage. But 
he can be a, a better shot blocker than this. You know, 1.9 blocks per game in college. That doesn't mean he's going to be able to get anywhere near that uh, through his NBA career, but at least more than 0.3 per game that he's currently getting. The efficiency is nice, 58, 75 from the line. That could stand to improve. But I think Aiton pushes back to being a top 50 top 40 guy and if the people that drafted him expected big block numbers I don't know why they would have but if they did uh, and they are really frustrated here this is a a significant type of buy low opportunity the 90th ranked player is Gary Harris who has started to show some signs of turning it around but still not pushing to that top 50 mark that we know that he can do averaging just 16 points 2.6 rebounds and three assists, and largely because his efficiency is still off, 42 from the field, 75 from the line. This is a high 80s type of free throw shooter, a high 40s type of field goal shooter, and only 1.3 steals. It's been a bit of a slow ride for Gaz, but I'd be looking at acquiring him. I think that you can get value because it has been a relatively prolonged slump from Harris, and you should be able to get some decent enough value hoping he jumps back into being that top 50 guy. The next player, Donovan Mitchell, who was yesterday's dud of the night on the show, he is the 91st ranked player. 19 point average, but the shooting is killing you. 39 from the field, 78 from the line, and 26 from three for a true shooting of 49%. The steals are fine, 1.7. The assists are fine, 3.7. Um, they could still all, all use to go up, but you know, there's a few things there that are pretty clear with Mitchell, and I think he's a pretty strong buy, buy low player. Look at try and target him for some sort of top 50 guy, um, and, and get that value back. Like if you could offer, say, over the last two weeks, Tim Hardaway is a top 50 guy, and so is Dennis Schroeder. If you had both those guys, I'd package them in an absolute heartbeat for Donovan Mitchell. Now I don't think anyone would accept it, but literally you never know because people, man, sophomore slump, one year wonder, uh, you can't do anything. This team sucks. There were people who have really, really strong overreactions, and Mitchell's they, a prime candidate for that. Kyle Lowry started the season red hot. He's the 95th player over the last two weeks, averaging just 11 points with eight assists, shooting poorly, 36 and 20 from the field and from three, and just 1.3 steals. His usage isn't that high this season. The assists have been a pleasant surprise, but this efficiency should come back up. So I think you can look at him as a pretty strong buy low as a top 35 type of a player for the rest of the season. There are guys who are ranked ahead of him over the last couple of weeks that, of course, you would never take over Lowry. So there's a pretty significant jump that he can uh, that he can go through to get uh, to get back into that top 30 type discussion. On the flip side, guys who are overperforming. Now, I love the table Montrez Howell, but he's the 18th ranked guy over the last two weeks averaging 20 and 8 with two blocks on 69% shooting and 71 from the field on eight or almost nine attempts per game. So there's uh, a few things there which seem a little bit out of whack. The 29 minutes may be high. The two blocks are, are high. The field goal percentage is through the roof, as are the free throw attempts. I'm not thinking that he's going to drop off significantly. I think he's still going to be a top 50 guy. But top 20 is probably a little bit aggressive for Harold. So if anyone's really buying into it, there are a few guys in this top range that look a little bit out of place as well. And the next one is Derek Rose at number 19, who's averaging 22 points with five assists. 0.6 steals uh, is you know, part of the issue there with Rose moving forward. But he's shooting unbelievably. 52% from the field, including 60% from three and 94% from the line. His number one uh, statistical category so far in these, in these two weeks is his uh, three-pointers followed by his free throws. Two numbers, he's hitting three threes per game. That and those 94% from the field, uh, from the line and 52% from the field are due to uh, fall back. Now, he is a must-roster player pretty clearly, but expecting top 20 numbers from Rose moving forward is probably a little bit unfair. Aaron Gordon is the 22nd ranked player. I think that some of his numbers are due to regress. Now, not necessarily too big. He can be a top 50 guy but he's averaging 19 points with seven rebounds. The four assists are high, the 54% from the field, and the 40% from three. We've seen this from Gordon so many times. He goes on these little hot streaks, and then he goes back and shoots 28% from three for three months. Now, I do think he will improve in that area, but will he be able to uh, maintain this sort of a level? I'm, uh, I'm pretty doubtful. Number 25 is Boyan Bogdanovic of the Indiana Pacers, averaging 18 points with almost three triples. You know, his rank here is almost solely influenced by the insane shooting, 61% from three, 57% overall, and 94% from the line. His two biggest categories 
are his threes and his field goal percentage. And of course, when the threes drop off from 61% and, and make no mistake, they will, then the field goal percentage drops, the threes drop, and he probably tumbles 80, 90 spots in the rankings uh, just by those two numbers alone. He's averaging 1.5 steals, which is pretty high for Bogdanovich, and he's fine to roster at this point, but he doesn't have the value of a top 25 player. Brookie Lopez at number 34, we've all been impressed with what he's done, but his numbers are fueled by four threes per game over the last seven games, hitting those at 49% with 1.7 blocks and 14 points per game. Hasn't missed a free throw, hasn't taken many, I think he's only taken three free throws over that time, but it's that insane uh, con contribution in the three-pointer category. Now, he's probably going to drop back down to being a 60 to 80 type of guy, but not a top 35 player. I referenced him early, Dennis Schroeder at uh, number 48, averaging 17, 5, and 6 with two steals. Russell Westbrook is back, so the minutes are going to dip, the usage is going to dip, the assists are going to dip, and he'll probably fall outside the top 100. People may still buy into it. I've seen people throwing trades around in the last 12 hours where they're getting value back for Schroeder, so you should be exploring that. Number 74 is Corey Joseph. Um, 29 minutes per game. His value there is fueled by the fact that he is getting 2.2 steals and shooting 52% from the field numbers, which are far from sustainable for Joseph. He's probably not really a sell high because nobody rosters him and nobody's going to buy into it. But just if you're looking at rankings and you're seeing this guy there, don't fall into it too much, especially with a really strong play of Aaron Holiday and the presence of Tyreek and Daz Collison. Joseph isn't going to be able to keep up the 29 minutes or that high efficiency or the high steal rate. The last guy we talk about is Al Farouk Aminu. 31 minutes a game over the last six games. He's the 83rd ranked player, 10 points with eight rebounds, shooting 48% from three-point land, which will dip his numbers. His largest contribution in this time are his threes, hitting 2.3 per game. So, of course, that'll drop, and a 30-40 spot fall will likely come for Aminu. He is a fringe 12-team league guy. If people don't uh, if people aren't aware of the sometimes maybe good, sometimes maybe shit nature of Aminu, maybe they'd be looking to acquire him. But I don't think that any sort of top 100 finish for Aminu is a, a realistic expectation. That'll do it for another look at some buy low, sell high type of guys for fantasy basketball.